Hello everybody. We're going to be showing you how to find the limit of a recursively defined sequence. As you see here, the recursively defined sequence we have starts at 2, and basically what we do to find the next term in the sequence, we just take the previous term, add 10 to it, and divide it by 2. And that's going to create the next term in the sequence. And we want to prove, one, that this thing converges, and two, that the limit of the sequence can be found and that we know what it is. So let's go ahead and start. So in order to prove that this thing converges, which is the first part of our problem, we need to prove that it increases and that it's bounded above. Now, it's not necessarily clear that this is going to increase until you start uh, listing off some of the terms in the sequence. And so we know our sequence starts at 2, and when you put 2 in here, we get 2 plus 10 over 2 is going to be 6. And you do the same thing to 6 and the same thing to 8, and you can kind of see how the sequence is continuing to increase. This is a good clue that we have an increasing sequence on our hands, and so we have to check it. The way we're going to be able to check this is using mathematical induction. So we have to prove two things. One, we have to prove that a sub k, and if it's increasing, we're proving that a sub k is less than or equal to a sub k plus one. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, not a sub k. We are proving that a sub one is less than or equal to a sub two. That's the first part of our process. And second part of our process, we want to prove if a sub k happens to be less than or equal to a sub k plus 1, then we know that a sub k plus 1 is going to be less than or equal to a sub k plus 2. And that plus 2 is down there on the, uh, on the index there. So, right. So this is what we're trying to prove. So let's go ahead and do it. a sub 1 is going to be 2 a sub 2 is going to be 6. And so since uh, 2 is definitely going to be less than or equal to 6, we know that a sub 1 is going to be less than or equal to a sub 2. So there's step 1 taken care of for us. Next up, step 2. What we're going to need to do with step 2 is we're going to need to sh assume that a sub k is less than or equal to a sub k plus 1 and then show that forces us to realize that a sub k plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub k plus 2. So if this is true, then that is true. That's what we're trying to do. So first step is we assume that a sub k is less than or equal to a sub k plus 1. And that's happened in one case already, right? It's happened in the case of a1 and a2. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of extra room here. There we go. So now that we've got a little bit of extra room, let's go ahead and finish this up. What we're basically going to do here is we are going to turn this a sub k into an a sub k plus 1. And we are going to turn this a sub k plus 1 into an a sub k plus 2. And the way we do that is we take a look back up here at our, uh, at our recursive step. And we realize in order to turn a sub k into a sub k plus 1, we need to add 10 to it and divide it by 2. So there's the idea. Okay. So uh, we are going to add 10 to it first, and so now we know that a sub k plus 10 is less than or equal to a sub k plus 1, and then that's plus 10. So we've added 10 to both sides of the inequality, and that still holds. And now what we're going to do is we're going to divide by 2. And when we divide 2, the inequality still holds as well. And you'll notice this is going to be a sub k plus 1. This is how you create a sub k plus 1. You just add 10 divided by 2. So this is a sub k plus 1, and that's less than or equal to a sub k plus 2. So if we start off by, by assuming that a sub k is less than or equal to a sub k plus 1, we are forced to conclude that a sub k plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub k plus 2. So this is going to, in sort of a, a chain reaction, uh, give us the proof that a sub 1 is less than or equal to a sub 2 is less than or equal to a sub 3 is less than or equal to and so on and so forth. So there's the first part of our proof. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and travel back up here. Now, uh, next up, we want to show that uh, a sub n is going to be bounded above. Well, it does look like it's going to be bounded above, right? It's, it's increasing. It's from 2 to 6 to 8 to 9, but it seems like it's slowing down quite a bit, right? And, uh, and if you actually took a look at the differences between all of these, you might have a guess of where it's going. 
but let's say we're not quite sure where it's going to end up and we just want to guess some number so we're going to guess that a sub k is going to be less than or equal to and I'm just going to pick 12 for this it seems like 12 would be a reasonable number so let's assume that a sub k is is going to be bounded above by 12 for any k and let's see if that works now we're going to do the same process here that we did on the other side we're going to show that a sub 1 is going to be less than or equal to 12 that's not too difficult and we're also going to show that if a sub k is less than or equal to 12 to 12 uh, then a sub k plus 1 is also less than or equal to 12 so this is what we want to prove it's induction in the same way that we use it on the other side so let's go ahead and give ourselves some room again there we go uh, all right so uh, we will go ahead and say for part one that a sub one is equal to two and if a sub one is equal to two two is definitely less than or equal to twelve so perfect we've got part one done we have proven that a sub one is less than or equal to twelve time for the second part the second part if a sub k is less than or equal to twelve so we get to assume a sub k is less than or equal to twelve so if a sub k is less than or equal to twelve we need to prove that a sub k plus 1 is also less than or equal to 12. So we're going to do the same process. We're basically going to be adding 10 to both sides and dividing by 2, just like we did on the other side. So let's add 10 to both sides. We're going to divide by 2. And this is going to let us know that uh, a sub k plus 1 because that's what we get on the left hand side right a sub k plus 10 all over 2 is a sub k plus 1 so a sub k plus 1 is going to be less than or equal to 11 which happens to be less than or equal to 12 so we have proven that a sub k plus 1 is less than or equal to 12 so we know this thing is going to be bounded above by 12 now this doesn't mean that 12 is the least upper bound that we could possibly choose but it is an upper bound and so we've done the two things we were trying to do here we have shown that the sequence increases and we've shown that it has an upper bound if it increases and has an upper bound we have a theorem that said that it's going to be uh, definitely a convergent sequence and so we now know this limit exists and so we want to find this limit and this limit let's just go ahead and call it L for right now that'll become useful here. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to hop over to this inductive step. And we're going to, or not the inductive step, the recursive, the recursive step. And we're going to say, all right, let's just take a limit on both sides. The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n minus one plus 10 all over two. So there we go. Now, this limit on the right-hand side sort of distributes itself throughout the problem, and this really ends up looking like the limit of a sub n minus 1 plus 10 all over 2. And I'm just going to leave the n approaches infinity out uh, with, we're just assuming that's there, right? So something to notice about these two limits. The limit, of a sub, or the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus, minus 1 and the limit of a sub n, both of these things are limits of the same sequence. So both of these things are going to have a limit of L, right? This means that L is equal to L plus 10 all over 2. And L is the number we're looking for. L is the limit that we're trying to find, right? Well, this is really simple algebra, right? We multiply by 2 on both sides. We subtract L from both sides and we're left with L is equal to 10. So this sequence right here was converging to 10 the entire time. It's very tempting to just jump to this step at the end and say, hey, we're finished. We don't have to do any of the rest of the work. But until we can prove that the limit exists, we're not allowed to do this part at all. It makes no sense whatsoever to say that the limit is equal to L until you prove the limit exists. And in order to prove the limit exists, we need to do something like this, where it's either increasing and bounded above, or maybe it could be decreasing and bounded below. But we have to prove the limit exists before we're allowed to use it. Once we're allowed to use it, 
then we can go ahead and do this really simple algebra and find the very nice solution and we know the limit is going to be equal to 10 in this case. So uh, this does converge, we prove the limit is 10, uh, we use mathematical induction twice, once with proving it increases and once with proving that it is a bounded sequence. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm available in class and in my office and uh, as always, happy mathing.